You say you know your scales, but then you play them, you sound like trash. Why is that? Anything that requires consistency, that's where you'll see the gap between the greats and the bumps. It's simply those who are willing to put in the time and dedicate the consistency to the crap. This is going to be the most important video that I ever make. Let's talk about practice. I like to think of practice in three definitive stages. First you have conceptual, then you have mechanical, and then you have internal. Let's get saucy. Step number one is conceptual. Before you can learn anything, you have to first understand the concept. This is purely mental. This has nothing to do with the actual execution of whatever you're learning. So whether it's a scale or chord progression, no matter what it is, you have to first understand the concept. Let's take the major triad for instance. The major triad is the one, three, five of a major scale. That is the concept. So this is phase one of practicing. Apply it to every single scale so you can practice applying that concept, okay? Now, this actually isn't that hard. Most people do just fine in this phase. It's actually phase two where 90% of the musicians that I see fail to progress, and that is mechanical. Now, this is probably the most important step, not because it's more important than the others, but just the fact it's one of the most neglected steps. Most musicians gloss over this step because it takes the most discipline and it's also the most mundane, so to speak. Now, let's unpack that for a second. Once you learn the concept, you have to take it a step further and learn the mechanics, okay? And not just learn the mechanics, but master mechanics. Here's a common scenario. I'll ask someone, do you know your skills? They'll say yes. And I say, okay, go ahead and play it. And it sounds like this. And to be frank, it sounds like utter crap. How dare you? You say you know your scales, but then you play them, you sound like trash. Why is that? It's because you only got past phase one, and that's the concept. You learn the concept of what the scales are, but you actually don't know them. And we need to actually define what knowing means, right? Because we say we know something, but what does that actually mean? And that's why we have to break it down to these three steps. When you say you know your scales and they sound like that, what you're really meaning and what you're really saying is, hey, I understand the concept of scales, but you don't have the mechanics down. And that's a huge part of piano playing. So like, listen to this C scale. Now listen to this one. They're the exact same notes, but one sounds professional and one doesn't. And why is that? It's because one, has polished mechanics and the other one doesn't. Now again, it takes discipline and consistency to achieve that kind of mechanics and that's where the laziness of musicians comes in, is they just don't want to do the work to actually master the mechanics and you don't have to mash them, just be good at them so at least they sound clean and polished. This is probably the number one step that separates the average musician from a great musician is actually the mechanics. Most musicians understand theory and can grasp difficult concepts, diminish and triads and augmented and tritones and substitutions, whatever you want to call it, you know? But when it comes to actually learning the mechanics and getting those down, that's where the separation happens. And so I just want to encourage you, please make sure that you take time to master mechanics. It doesn't have to be intimidating. It doesn't have to be eight hours a day. It just requires consistency. If you practice your mechanics 10 to 15 minutes at a time, you know, when you work between one to three times a day, and you do that every day or at least five days a week, you will see drastic improvement in just 30 days. And that takes time and that takes consistency and that takes diligence. And those are some of the most common traits that people don't choose to exhibit. And you see the same thing with exercise. It doesn't matter what it is, anything that requires consistency, that's where you'll see the gap between the greats and the bumps. It's simply those who are willing to put in the time and dedicate the consistency to the craft. Now, it doesn't just stop there. Once you get the mechanics down, there's a very, very, very crucial step to why mechanics are important. Once the mechanics are practiced to the point where they're second nature, what that does is it frees up brain power to move to the next step, which is internalizing and being able to listen. And now you start building the sound mind connection. And what do I mean by that? What I mean by that is when I'm playing piano, I hear it and then my fingers do it, right? There is no like cognitive thought. The reason why is I've practiced certain things so many times that now when I think it and I hear it is an instantaneous response. And so that's really important, but the only way you get there is if you bypass the first two. Sports is a great way to think about this, right? The multitasking part. When you're playing basketball, if you don't know how to dribble and you don't practice dribbling, you're gonna be paying attention to every single dribble and thus you won't be able to run with the ball or lay up or dribble through traffic, right? Take a look at Steph Curry. 
He can shoot the ball from anywhere at any given moment. He does intense dribbling drills to make sure that that's not on his mind when he's playing. It's no different than in music. When I'm playing piano, I have rep scales and chord chains and arpeggios so much to a degree that I don't have to think about it. And what that does is it frees up processing power. It's like a computer. It's your ability to multitask. When you're playing music, you have to be able to listen while you play. But a lot of musicians that I run into can't do that because they're too busy focused on trying to execute the mechanics. And that's why it's so important to master the mechanics. And maybe mastering is too daunting or too intimidating. So you don't even have to master it, but you have to be good enough to where you don't have to think about it anymore. So your C scale should sound like this. And you should be able to play it without thinking too much about it. That way when you're playing, you can focus on other stuff because great musicians are always thinking ahead. We're never thinking just at the current moment. We're always thinking what's coming next and how we can flow into that. And so the only way you can get to that level of proficiency is by taking time to really understand the mechanics of whatever it is you wanna play. Now, I'm not saying you have to master every single thing at the piano. That's not what I'm saying. I'm simply saying when you are learning something, make sure you go through those three phases. So if you're learning diminished chords, first understand the concept, right? But then once you understand the concept, then you need to physically play all the diminished chords until you can play them proficiently without mistakes, repeatedly, and without having to really think about it too hard. Then once you get there, you need to go back and start to analyze and listen as you play the diminished chords. And that's that phase, the internalizing phase, where you build that sound mind connection, where you can now hear the diminished chord in whatever flavor you like, and then you can play it because you've played it so many times that now you understand the nuances. I remember when I was first starting to play, the 88 keys seemed so intimidating, but after playing you know, a C major triad so many times, you start to see it light up on the keyboard. It just like, they're glowing, right? And it's like, you can't help but see it. And that's the point. But you only get there after you've put in the work for the first two steps. Once you put in the work on the concept, the mechanic, when you look at the piano, it's like all these patterns just light up in front of your face. You start thinking diminished and all of a sudden the keyboard just lights up diminished. You start thinking major. It's crazy. It's really weird, but in the coolest way. So I want to really encourage you guys, make sure you take the time to practice and practice well. And it's better to practice in short bursts than it is to practice for long and then not be aware. Okay, and I'm gonna make a whole separate video on how to practice, because that's just as important. But please, this is just my personal strategy and how I look at practice and how I look at, you know, how I learn. I just wanna share it with you guys and hopefully it helps you to, um, to practice better and to understand better how you learn. But again, there's three stages that I like to look at it. And first, that's the concept, second, the mechanics, and then third, the internalization and the sound mind connection. Okay, so whatever it is you're trying to learn, make sure that you learn the concept, right? learn the concept well then you need to practice that concept mechanically and don't settle for mediocrity because then you'll always be media it doesn't matter how much you know if you can't execute it physically it's worthless you can know everything there is about music theory but if you can't put it into practice it's useless you're just a walking encyclopedia with no use and you don't want to be that so make sure you take the time to actually master the mechanics so that it sounds good then after that, it'll free you up to be able to actually dissect in real time what you're playing. And that's going to help tremendously when it comes to your solos, tremendously when it comes to your comping and chord changes, passing chords, voice leading. All that is based off of your ability to listen. But if you have not mastered the mechanics, you won't be able to listen. And if you can't listen, then you can't play on the fly. So please. This is literally the most important video I'll ever make because everything that I play and teach is based on these three principles. Please make sure you take the time to learn the concepts, put in the work and the hours to master the, the concepts mechanically, and then put in more work and hours to understand and listen to get that real-time feedback of what you're playing. I hope this video encouraged you, I hope it helps you, and I hope it set off a light bulb to maybe help give you some insight into your own habits and how to become a better musician. I'll be making another video on how to practice, that way you can put the two together and hit that next level. I'll catch you guys in the next video.